all right so we are on the part 2 of chapter number 17 dr kemp's visitor uh, if you remember chapter number 17 we have we were in the house of dr kemp and the invisible man has landed here and he has told kemp that i know you because we were in the same college the university college and he has told so much about himself but even if dr kemp wants to know how he has become invisible and of course the reader also wants to know but he has griffin has not revealed anything he has only asked for food and he has asked for clothes he wants to be comfortable and he says right now i am so tired because i have not slept for 3 days he says i cannot tell you anything but maybe in the next chapter chapter number 18 Right now we are going to do a review in this second part of chapter number 17 so let us review this chapter there is a sound of doorbell at dr kemp's house but the maid who answers it finds nobody after midnight kemp goes towards his room and notices blood stains on the rug as well as on the door knob of his own room so this is something very strange for him how has blood appeared all over his house his bed is also tumbled up and the bed bed clothes are blood stained with a sheet torn so as dr kemp enters his room it is a complete mess and he is trying to understand how come this whole thing has happened like this kemp hears a low voice good heavens kemp and also sees a bandage suspended in mid air you know a bandage suspended in mid air because his sheet was torn so of course the reader understands that the invisible man has made a bandage and what has he bandaged he has bandaged his wrist the invisible man uh, has bandaged his wrist because it is injured uh, and how is it injured by the gunshot that was fired in the previous chapter suddenly a voice addresses him and an invisible hand holds him by the shoulder even when kemp is trying to understand what is happening uh, an invisible hand holds his shoulder and kemp kemp fights frantically but is pinned down on the bed and threatened by the invisible man the voice tells him that he is griffin This is the first time that the author has used his name. We have been using his name because we have done the quotation from this chapter in chapter number 1 itself. So we know his name, but the author has not revealed his name right up till chapter number 17. Griffin, a fellow student from University College, 6 feet, albino. This is what he tells him we have done the description earlier also in the uh, part 1 of chapter 17 griffin asks for food and rest claims to be wounded tired and hasn't slept for 3 days kemp is curious to know his story but griffin wouldn't tell it yet i have been mad i think in this relaxing atmosphere griffin after a long time is thinking straight and is realizing the reader has always realized that griffin is reacting abnormally as if he was mad but this is for the first time griffin says i have been mad and that he has committed blunders he says about kemp you haven't changed much kemp these dozen years so there have been a quite a span of a decade 12 years between them you fair men don't cool and methodical he understands that kemp is as normal as he was in college but griffin has changed so much normal people like kemp who lead a good life and remain cool and logical exactly the opposite of him so kemp is normal and griffin is an exact opposite of kemp he is angry at marvel who has cheated and robbed him of course he would be very angry but now he has no way of going and finding marvel and what are the notes the importance of this chapter very important chapter 
Apparently, fate has brought Griffin to the door of Kemp, who is an even-headed man. What is the meaning of even-headed? Even-headed, somebody who can think very, very patiently and very, very logically. A, a, an even-headed man of science. Griffin calls him my first stroke of luck. How nice, you know, Griffin has come and for the first time in Kemp's house, he thinks that he has turned lucky after so many months because nothing has gone in his favor. So the, for the first time, maybe things have turned and the tide has turned and things are in favor of Griffin now. He thinks this way. Uh, we don't know how it is going to prove later on. But right now, Griffin is happy that finally things are going well. We come to know his name for the first time his real physical appearance and that he was an intelligent student. Who is his uh, right now? We are talking about the invisible man. We come to know his name and how he looks. Kemp's reaction. See how other people react, how do the villagers react. We have seen shrieks, shouting, screaming. But Kemp doesn't do anything like this. He behaves so coolly. Where even when he is confronted by the invisible man, he shows no hysterics, no superstitions at all and a very, very cool demeanor. This is what he shows and uh, this is what brings us to the end. And uh, after this, we are going to do chapter number 18, which would be a continuity of chapter number 17. Uh, because in the next chapter, as the reader and also as Kemp wait, we are going to get the history of the invisible man.